Nintendo is suing the creator of a popular Switch emulator um, called Yuzu. Um, Nintendo said, quote, there is no lawful way to use Yuzu. Use Yuzu. Say that five times fast. There's no lawful way to use Yuzu to play Nintendo Switch games. Uh, end quote. And they're seeking, quote, equi equitable relief and damages, end quote, uh, from Tropic Haze, who, who created, which is the organization that created Yuzu. Um, they're seeking about $150,000 in damages, as well as any additional damages or profits that Yuzu made. Um, and this, you know, looking specifically at this stat here, that um, Yuzu's Patreon is bringing in currently about 30 grand a month. A month. I would kill to make 30 grand. I would kill to make... I would kill to make 15 grand a month. Um, and basically, Nintendo feels that the existence of Yuzu is, quote, facilitating piracy at a colossal scale, end quote. So, um, you know, this is an anti-piracy lawsuit. Um, the way emulators work is that, you know... An emulator is exactly what it sounds like. The verb emulate means to copy. So the idea is that an emulator is a software that emulates or behaves like a specific console. So there are PlayStation 3 emulators. There are Nintendo 64 emulators. There's all these different emulators. And the idea is that they mimic the uh, console. So that if you were to uh, have the game code of a specific game, you could then use that emulator to play that game. As if it was like you had a physical cartridge or disc and you had the physical console. Um, and a lot of times the way that the, the consoles verify that like you are using this legally is that there are like decryption keys. Um, and Yuzu requires that you have some kind of decryption key for a Switch. Um, Yuzu does not provide these, but they provide links to find them. Um, you know, and a lot of emulators work like that, like BIOS um, is like a term I've I've, I've seen. Um, and the reason why I want to talk about this story is that emulation is a very something I'm very interested in. Uh, full disclosure, I don't know if I'm incriminating myself, but I mean, I use emulation, especially for older games. Like pretty much nothing after the mid 2000s just because like I can't really run it super well I'm just using a Mac um but like older games that's you know um my preferred way to to play a lot of these um but the what makes it interesting is that emulation is that legal gray area right because there's different kind of facets to it and they're all of differing legality and potentially morality um so you know theoretically emulators themselves are perfectly legal right the actual software that is mimicking a GameCube right to use an example. And it reminds me a lot of a VCR, right? So there was a, a court case. I think it was like the early 2000s where basically movie studios or maybe it wasn't studios, but basically there was a lawsuit about that VCRs were it, like should not exist because people could then, you know, tape, if, if you're old enough to remember, I, I am for sure, but more so when I was a kid, you know, you could put a blank v, VHS in your VCR and tape something that was on TV. So if a movie was on TV, you could then tape the movie, and now you just have a copy of the movie. You didn't have to go out and buy a VHS, right? Um, so, you know, I think there was this court case basically saying VCR shouldn't exist because it, it, it you know, I'm sure they used similar language as Nintendo, which was, quote, facilitating piracy at a colossal scale, end quote. Um, and I believe the Supreme Court, whatever court it was, deemed, no, they can't, they are legal because that's just one way you can use it. And it's not fair to limit, uh, the actions of other people that aren't going to use it illegally to create copies and then to sell them. Right. Um, so theoretically the emulator itself is perfectly legal, right? Um, where you start to move into a gray area is the ROM. So a ROM, I forget what it stands for, but essentially when I say ROM, I'm talking about the game, like the game file, the game code, the thing that's on the, the cartridge or the disc um, or, or the thing you download, right? Um, theoretically, it is perfectly legal if you have a game, disc or cartridge or whatever it is, it is perfectly legal, according to some people, that you are per legally allowed to make copies of your of your uh, property. Um, if you have the tech to do it, theoretically it's legal. Um, you know, the way, um, I'm trying to think of a, of a good example, but, but it's a gray area. It's not something that has ever been conclusively decided in a court of law in the United States one way or the other. Um, but theoretically you are allowed, like if you've per legally purchased it's kind of like when you buy a CD and then like you, you know, 
you would go on iTunes and you could like basically copy of the songs onto your iTunes. What you were doing is copying MP3s onto your computer and that's legal. So theoretically that should be the same for game ROMs, right? The thing that is certainly illegal but potentially, like, who gives a shit? <laughs> but what is definitely illegal is distributing ROMs online, right? Um, you know, technically, uh, if I go to a site that has a bunch of game ROMs, me acquiring them is also illegal. But there's no legal precedent, um, you know, someone being found guilty and getting in trouble legally for downloading a ROM online. The, what has had legal precedent is the distributing of ROMs, right? So if you make your own copy, that's all well and good. But if you're giving it out on the internet to other people, that's where, you know, you potentially get into some hot water. Um, and Nintendo is specifically citing uh, Tears of the Kingdom, the new Zelda game that came out last May. About a, shit, holy shit, it's been like almost a year now. Um, that the game um, actually leaked prior to release. The ROM was uploaded online and it had over a million downloads. Um, important to note, though, the legal version of the game still sold like over 20 million copies, right? So, you know, it's not like the game flopped completely all because people were getting it for free. But, you know, it, it, the, a million downloads is still a lot, right? Um, and Nintendo notes that subscriptions, during use, uh, subscriptions to Yuzu's Patreon doubled during this leaked Tears of the Kingdom period, right? And... Nintendo has been, I'll get into this in a bit, but like they've, they have a history of going after emulated, emulator related uh, people or organizations or, or entities. Um, and usually they are being way overzealous about it. But here I can kind of understand there is somewhat of a valid argument here. Um, again, usually emulation is best um, and most legal and or moral when it's like an older game for a discontinued console, right? Sometimes they still re-release games on newer consoles and that creates new complexities. But, you know, if it's a game that's like 40 years old and you cannot buy it, like you, you really have your only recourse is to buy a used copy on eBay and it might be like hundreds of dollars. I personally feel emulation is not hurting the business the way perhaps the Tears of the Kingdom being leaked literally as it's being released for the first time, that could that could potentially hurt their business. Not hurt it in the sense that they're going to go out of business, but that is objectively cutting into the potential sales of the new game, right? Um, so there's somewhat of a valid argument here. But again, Nintendo, this is this is rare for for me in this instance to say Nintendo is in the right here because again, Nintendo has a history of being hyper litigious, especially when it comes to. Uh, gaming piracy and emulators, um, which are, are not necessarily synonyms, but are kind of are. Um, you know, GameSpot notes that they usually go after ROM sites. They're usually not going after the creators of emulators. They're going after, again, those sites where people can download ROMs. Um, and a really popular emulator, Dolphin, that was my, the first emulator I ever used, and it's, so far it's still been the one I have the best experience with um, on my Apple MacBook because um, I have the new silicon chip, the M2, and it works like a dream, right? Dolphin was going to, um, they, they actually canceled, they were going to release Dolphin, the software, through Steam, which is like another gaming, digital gaming distributor. Um, they were going to release Dolphin through Steam, which was really helped proliferate Dolphin. Um, but they canceled this plan because Nintendo gave, sent them a cease and desist. Again, just because they sent a cease and desist doesn't mean that it's technically illegal. But... Whoever created Dolphin does not have the same legal and financial resources as Nintendo. So even if like Dol even if Dolphin is is well within the right to do that, they just were like it's not worth it for us to try to fight this, right? Um, and it's really interesting because you know I was doing the research for the story today, and literally as I finished doing research for it, news broke that uh, it was announced that Yuzu and and um, who is it Tropic Haze will give Nintendo everything they want. Uh, in this lawsuit, they're settling completely, folding net, net, with no compromising whatsoever. Um, Tropic Haze agrees to pay Nintendo $2.4 million. Um, and part of the deal, they're essentially abandoning Yuzu. Um, you know, they're no longer going to distribute it. They're not going to work on it anymore. They're, they're surrendering the domain name. I forget what it was, but like the website where you would find Yuzu. They're giving that domain to Nintendo. Um... But it doesn't completely solve the problem because Yuzu is still out there. You know, people have already downloaded it. And I read a report that people, you know, once Nintendo brought this lawsuit, they specifically backed up, you know, their Yuzu software file or whatever it was. Um, so, you know, it's still out there. The, the genie's out of the bottle. 
Um, but emulation is definitely interesting kind of area um, since, you know, gaming is really, the gaming industry is really bad about preserving its history. And emulation has been a primary way to preserve history. And it's, it's very fan or consumer driven. Um, a lot of these companies like Nintendo will just let some of these games that they own the rights to just languish. Um, and like every amazing game you can get access to. But preservation is not about preserving the best. It's about preserving, right? So I want to be able to play a shitty Nintendo Entertainment System game from 1988. I, I should be able to do that easily. Whether I have to pay or not, you know, if they were make it available publicly and I really wanted to play it, then I could pay them. But if they're not going to make it accessible for people, then you're just asking for piracy, you know. Um, so it's a little disappointing to see them uh, kind of just fold like that. But again, I, I imagine they don't really have the resources to, um, you know, uh, fight this. Vivian Metzger says, stop incriminating yourself. I don't care. There's never been a, a court case where someone has been brought to trial for downloading an illegal ROM. And there are way bigger YouTubers who who openly admit that they use emulators and, and download illegal ROMs. So if they're not getting sued, I am not going to get sued. 